Hello and welcome to another live stream. I'm broadcasting from Silt. I don't have the best conditions. It's a little uh, a bit too dark. I don't know how the internet connection is, but I'm up here in Silt. It's the northernmost island in Germany. Uh, they call it the German Hamptons, and it is where the largest windsurfing World Cup in the world takes place, which is where I, I am now to compete. Um, so that's what I'm doing. What are you guys doing? Did you sail? If so, how was it? Uh, thank you to all the supporters who are supporting uh, the live stream uh, on the Patreon. Um, here's a list of names of people supporting. Um, Got to add the rest of them. Uh, we've good. We've got too many, too many to support the. Uh... Got to do a second banner. All right, there's the second list. So thank you everyone for supporting with the uh, Patreon, and so to support the live stream, you can sign up for the newsletter, which I put out every month, and I try to make it interesting about coaching, about windsurfing. I'm writing articles about, you know, about a lot of different things, about warm-ups. Uh, I shared an interview that I did with Robbie Nash this month. Um, and so I'm always, always trying to put stuff out. Uh, that's the best way to support the stream, other than just telling your friend and getting your friend to join as well. Hey, Jorg, Matt. Um, Jorg and Matt were on the masterclass in Denmark uh, last week. That was an awesome time. And uh, yeah, I'm going to write you guys follow-up emails as well. That's on my to-do list. Uh, I've been busy getting ready for this World Cup. So I'm here in Silt, and it looks like we're going to get some good conditions tomorrow. At least we're crossing our fingers. Um, we're crossing our fingers that it's going to be good. It's going to be wet. It's going to be wet. Um, so... We'll see. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, Caro, John, um, everyone on Facebook. Hello, Facebook users. Yeah, so I'm going to be on the water tomorrow. Otherwise, in the last week since last Sunday, I have not sailed. I had a lot of time on the water um, the weeks before that up in Denmark. And then I had the last few days in Hamburg getting ready. Now I'm in Silt, and we're going to keep compete tomorrow, bright and early. Uh, luckily, I've got my fisherman's outfit that I bought up in Denmark uh, for the cold rain that's going to come. Uh, hey, Herman, uh, Suna. Hi, Suna had a good uh, good session on Monday with a 4.7 and an 85. Yeah, Jorg, it's going to be windy in Silt tomorrow. It's difficult to say what exactly is going to come through with that forecast, it could be 3.7 or 4.0 wind, or it could be 4.5 wind in the morning. And then how big the waves are, how strong the current is, how much rain there is, how gusty it is. All of those are, are kind of unknown variables. Um, the tide is coming up, which is good. And the forecast for the wind has been changing with whether it, um, you know, uh, at the beginning of today, it said the forecast was calling for the wind to die early in the afternoon. I've got a plane going overhead, uh, but the latest forecast has the wind lasting all day. So we'll see. Hi, Thomas. I'm looking forward to the conditions. I think it's kind of similar to some of the sailing that we had up in Denmark over the last few weeks. Anyway, let's jump into the Facebook group and go through the posts that were posted this week. So, all right, let's refresh this. And hi, Dennis. All right, let's refresh this. And all right. Thank you, guys. It means a lot. You're rooting for me. All right. Let's get this. All right. Here's the Facebook group. All right. So. We've got a question from Mario. How do you pack your bag? Oh, man. Oof. 
Um, can you avoid damages in cases like this? I'm pretty relaxed with my bag packing. Uh, I know a lot of other people are more anal about it, but I kind of just throw my, my boards in the bag. And for the most part, I don't have a problem. Um, hey, Dennis, we got two Dennises. Um, but this looks pretty gnarly. I don't know if there's something you can do to avoid this. If I'm really worried, I'll put some cardboard around the noses and tails of the boards. Oof, they are just not taking good care of these bags. Um, yeah, that's a shame that they're treating these bags so poorly. Lots of damage to those boards. Oh, my God. Um, but anyways, I like to keep it tight. Hi, Olivia. Uh, you don't want the boards moving around in the bag, right? If the boards are moving around in the bag, then uh, they're more likely to get damaged. So you want to have um, make sure that the internal straps are tight and that the, the, bag, the boards and everything are packed in such a way that you don't have a lot of stuff moving around in the bag. And then uh, you don't want to overpack the bags. You want to be conscious of what you put on top of your boards. Hey, Max, uh, you know, you don't want your boom head to be pushing into the top of your board or your harness hook or something. So be conscious of, of what is where. Generally, I like to have my boards and I'll have a separate bag that I'll put sails in and extensions and boom. Sometimes I'll put with the boards and sometimes with the sails and then mass uh, with the boards or on, in their own bag. Um, but I try not to put too much in in the bag with the boards uh, because that, you know, everything that is extra in there that's hard can damage them. Um, otherwise, some good comments here. Ouch. I'll, next time I pack my bags, I'll, I'll take a picture and show you how I pack them. All right, here's a post, <laughs> Turn that off. post from Thomas of his friend Sebastian uh, doing forwards in Vargas. So awesome progress. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, this is great. I mean, these are really solid, solid forward loops. I love to see this. Um, really good technique. It looks like he's been learning with the Weimaru goose screw technique. How he's doing, I like like this. I mean, the next step is just to keep doing it, just to do to go with more speed. Um, yeah, just go with more speed, try and get a little bit higher. But that's a that's a solid forward loop. Nice job. Um, you can also try and stand a little bit more upright, not lean back so much, um, because when you're really pulling back like that, it's also not not great. But solid, it's solid, it's solid. He could look look a little bit more over his shoulder as well, but this this is solid. All right, you guys wanted more raw footage of me. Uh, so I put together some raw footage. And you can find that here through this link. Uh, it's like 9 or 10 minutes. Yeah, it's almost 10 minutes of just raw Hokipo windsurfing. Um, yeah, so if you were one of the people asking for more raw footage, here's a clip. And so basically, I just took all the clips from this day that my wife filmed threw them into a timeline. Uh, I did a little bit of color just to every clip, not not going through to every clip, just a layer, and then uh, exported them. So it's all in chronological order. Uh, so this is pretty much just my session, or at least what my wife filmed. I probably sailed a little bit longer. I think it was an hour and a half of uh, filming, and I might have sailed a bit longer, but, and then she had, but she had to leave before that. And you can see... Yeah, what it's like to ride Hokipa. This is a relatively windy day. I'm on a 5.0, and you can see that there's a lot of people planing around. Uh, I'm often on a 5.0, but not often planing. I don't often have as much power. Um, but yeah, you get a good idea for, yeah, kind of what it's like to sail, sail Hokipa. And it's interesting. I really like these clips as well, because when you look at the you know, the, the highlight edits, you know, you're seeing 60 seconds that's distilled down from two months of windsurfing 
and just picking the best moments. Um, and so it's really nice to have footage that's just from one day and then like this, where it's every clip from the session. Um, and it, yeah, I think it's interesting and it shows a lot, shows a lot more. I also like these clips. So thank you guys for requesting them. I have some from Denmark, have some other ones too that I'll post. Um, all right. Olaf just got his new batch of K4 fins. Nice, 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 nice. The Izzy side fins, I highly recommend. And I use the flexes in the rear. I, I'm sorry, not the flexes. These, This is the flex. I use the scorcher, not the flex. So this is the flex. I use the scorcher. Or this is maybe the stubby. The stubby or the flex. Anyway, I use the scorcher. It does not look like that in the rear. Um, just FYI. But this looks like a good setup for you. All right. Um, so I did a... Uh, kind of a podcast thing with Ben Prophet during the week. And we talked about learning back loops and push loops. And so Tavi responding to that shows some of his push loop attempts. Um, and some of them are pretty close. It looks like Tavi, if you put a bit more time in, you'd really start to land them. Um, yeah, but these are definitely push loops, not back loops. So I'd really go for the push loops. I, you know, it's just, you got to then think about, you know, when you're here and you've gotten on top of the gear, which is great, just to keep pushing, pushing on the sail, pushing through. Um, and that will get you over, over the top and rotate it so that you can land on the tail of the board. Oh, there you're over rotating, but, but not that bad. I would guess that that wasn't such a bad wipeout. Yeah. So really throwing everything around. You could throw a little bit harder. Um, yeah, nice work, Toby. And if you missed the talk I did with Ben Profit, there's probably a link here somewhere. All right, so Tom wants to learn double forwards. What is my advice? My advice is to get really good on your single forwards. And the double is more similar to a really good planing forward than a stalled forward. Um, it's kind of similar to table forward. Some of the some of the aspects of the table forward are similar, but you want to get those planing forwards really, really good. You want to get them nice and sideways, get some height on them, and still be able to land planing. That's how you get good at doubles. Um, really good single forwards. Keep keep that rotation horizontal. Have control. Uh, that's that's the main thing. So once you get those, then you're ready to start trying for the doubles. Ragnar made a movie of his um, masterclass experience. So we did a masterclass. Uh, he was a week one in Denmark. We did two in Denmark. And he was on the first week. He made a little movie about it. So you can check that out. Here is Stefan Steve, Steven, Sevens, um, who was working on his forward loops. And... Looks awesome. Um, uh, from what we see here, these three pictures looks great. There's three things or two things, really just two things. But basically, you want to move your hands back. Put your front hand by the harness lines. The back hand should be back by the clips. And then really look over your shoulder. So you can see you're traveling. In this picture, you're kind of traveling towards the beach. So you want to be looking that way because if you're looking where you're traveling, then you don't get dizzy, you know where you are, the move feels slower, and it just helps you rotate better. So look over that shoulder. Those are the two main things. Everything else looks fine. Um, get the wide grip, look over that shoulder, and those are two really common things, uh, but you, you're getting a nice sideways rotation, you're, you're finding a way to get height uh, without while going over the back of the waves, which is, which is great as well. Um, you're not throwing your body, you're using the sail. So there's a lot to like. Keep You can go wider grip, move the hands back, front hand back, and back hand way back. And look with the head. And you got it. All right. Eric Ak asks, so observation, thought, or something. One thing that has struck me when watching wave riding vids of pros versus punters is that the pros seem to really accelerate when dropping into the wave. Me and others are more like just chugging along at constant speed. Related, I see that myself and others tend to be more upright in the bottom turn. 
with a board which has a fair amount of the tip out of the water, riding with too much weight on the back. Not sure where I'm going with this other than perhaps some tips on how to accelerate on the drop and acknowledgement of what you're observing. Caro, good luck tomorrow. I'll see you on the beach. Thanks for tuning in. So uh, this is a great observation from Eric. And Phil says something that I really like. He says, I think the key, as others have said, is the positioning on the wave. Um, and and it's, you know, like I, I say so many times, the fundamentals are wave selection, um, where you are on that wave, and your timing on that wave. So selection, placement, and timing. And if you have those fundamentals without the technique, you can ride waves well. And with the technique, but lacking the fundamentals, you can't. So having those fundamentals is huge. And this is something that Eric is tapping into. And, and so not only is it about placement on the wave, but often wave selection. And when we talk about placement, we're talking about uh, where you are on the wave across the wave, but also up and down the wave. And you do want to start your wave ride on the wave so that your bottom turning when you get to the bottom of the wave, you're not dropping into the bottom of the wave and then starting your bottom turn. In fact, it's a great exercise to work on your wave rides, never going into the bottom of the wave and always staying on the face of the wave and letting the power of the wave connect with your board. It's a great exercise to do. And sometimes that is also the ideal way to ride whatever wave you are riding. Um, so really being aware of that placement and also wave selection. Um, you know, another thing that I see pro versus non-pro is a lot of the non-pro guys are riding waves that they really shouldn't be trying to ride. Um, bigger is better for most days. You know, sometimes Aloha Facebook, uh, some days that's not the case. But, you know, if it's a smallish day, a meter high, meter and a half day, uh, you know, taking the half meter waves is not doing any favors for yourself in terms of helping you get speed. The bigger the wave, the more face there is, the more speed there is. Uh, so you want to be picky. You want to be really picky. Pick the bigger waves. They'll offer you more turns. They'll offer you more speed. You want to be picky, picky, picky. And then on that wave, make sure you're at a power source. You want to be on a peak on the wave and then traveling to another power source. And stay high on the wave. Now, Eric is also observing something about being on the back foot, getting the, on the tail of the board. That is also true, but focus on the positioning, first of all. If you just focus on the positioning and your placement, you'll see huge improvements, and then you can start working on the technique. Um, so, yep, agreed. All right, here's that podcast I did. Hey, Bart, here's the podcast I did with Ben. Uh, you can check it out on YouTube. And I'll do more of these. I like talking with Ben, and so we're going to do more of these. All right, Greg also just got fins. Nice. Um, here we go with some forwards from Dennis in Belgium. Um, so he's doing them on shore with the 4.5, a little underpowered, but that's good. You don't want to be too overpowered when you're trying them. Um, he's not landing it yet. His two analyses are that he doesn't exceed, succeed to look back enough and maybe a bit scared to really jump and cheat in, not high enough. The second is his fast tack. Um, okay, so let's look at the video. All right. Pretty radical on the forward. I, I have to say, Dennis, right on. Um, wh wh what do you say? You say that you don't have the... You're scared to really jump. Not at all. You're going huge. As we see from the other um, learn to forward sequences earlier, they were going a lot lower, which is totally fine for learning the forwards. So this is huge for, for learning the forward, where you're jumping, you're even stalling it a little bit. This is huge. In fact, you know, one of one of my first bits of advice might be to go lower to not go as high because i think then you're kind of psyching yourself up when you go so high and then it makes it it makes it scary to to really focus on too too scary to focus on the technique uh but but you're going huge you don't have to worry about the height um you, you i think you want to throw start start the rotation sooner off the ramp so so one way i've heard it and again 
I don't know how big this wave is. Um, but what I've heard is that you want to start that rotation, really throw the rotation for the forward when the mass base gets to the top of the wave. So about here. And so you're, you're pushing that sail up sort of into the wind. And then that moment, well, I, get, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, I guess at that moment you can then, so you, here you're pushing everything up into the wind, kind of sheeting out, and then boom, right there, mast foot goes off the wave. You're sheeting in, going for the rotation. Um, and so that you've, you've got a little bit of stall. Um, so I think you want to go for that rotation sooner, sooner off the ramp. And then you really want to look behind you. It's so important because look, look where you're traveling, right? You're, you're, you're traveling over here. And so you want to be always be looking where you're going. In most, most cases you want to be looking where you're going. So getting that head over the shoulder will make a huge difference. You can think of um, oops, you can think of looking, looking at your clue or, but you really want to get that head over the shoulder and then really, uh, sheet in sooner off the ramp. And, and those will, those will be huge. Hello to Orlando. All right. Here's another one. Oh, there's the fast tag. So this looks pretty nice also. Let's see. All right. Coming around. So do you fall on this one? We, we don't see the ending of it. So Dennis, if you're still in the chat, what, what happens in the end of this? There's, uh, I think the technique looks pretty solid. Um, there's one thing that I don't like. Um, so you're really reaching with this hand and see how this arm is then crossing this arm. That's not a very stable position. And so the way that I like to think of it is that the hand that's on the mast is passing the sail to the other hand. And so you could just let that hand sit there waiting for the sail. And so you can actually go, so you want to go kind of quick here but then once once you're getting to the other side, you can go really slow, and so you don't you don't have to uh, grab with that new the new front hand so soon. You can pass the sail, so that that new new front hand kind of stays static, and you're passing the sail to it, and that gets the arm the body, which is what I call the closing the door, and then you can sit there for a moment. So at this, at this end, ending part, the last third, you have a lot of time. You don't need to rush it. You don't need to rush to grab the sail. It's like this motion where your arm is, is kind of twisted like this is something you want to avoid. You want to kind of let that hand stay, you know, coming straight out this way, be moving with this bottom hand to bring the sail to the hand that's somewhere over here waiting for the sail. And in doing that, then you're closing the door more, which also opens up more space for your body on the tail of the board. So then it's easier for you to get your back foot in a good position. And then also a more centered position so that you're easier, you have an easier time balancing. And then, then at the end, uh, let's, let's go to the end. At the end, then that will make it so that you can be more upright. So you're over the center line of the board rather than leaning back. Because often with the fast tack, you want to sort of end the tacking movement centered, standing fully upright over the volume of the board. And then you can push out on the sail to backwind it if you need that help to balance or sort of sheet in and go off. But what you don't want to do is rush to sheet in because then you'll fall back on your butt, like what happens here. All right, here's another one. All right, let's watch this. Okay, so 
Um, same comments, like I said before, except one other thing. I want to see. So let's let's see this. So I want to see your head at this point more actively looking over this shoulder. You really want to be looking with the head upwind. And so you're really actively looking with the head upwind. And then when you go around, then the head switches. Uh, but but before you go around, you want to make sure that like like that is good. Like like uh, here, let's find that. This is this is good. You want to keep keep your head looking like that through the whole through the whole tack. And then otherwise, the same things that I said before uh, about not reaching over with the new hand, about giving yourself some time, and then trying to stay over the board and upright at the end of the tack. Is this the same, the same video or a different one? It's a very similar, it's a different video, but maybe it's the same jump because it's a very similar kind of takeoff. So you want to go for the rotation earlier. Um, and then really look behind you and, um, yeah, really think of that rotation as a twist rather than a loop. And you don't have to stall it as much. You don't have to stall it as much as you're doing. If you take off earlier, you'll fully land this. Um, I just see there's a number, another point from Serhe about straightening your front arm. Um, that can also be distortion from the, the camera where the front arm looks bent, but you definitely want to make sure that your front arm is straight. Um, all right, here's a from Jan. I think we talked about this. It was a difficult session. Thank you for sharing it. Um, all right, Sam is asking about how to avoid catapulting when doing a chop hop. Um, I think you want to go upwind. Make sure you're you don't want to chop hop downwind because that's when you when you kind of land flat, and you get pulled over the front. Um, so the, the first thing would be make sure you're kind of going upwind. Um, yep, yeah, that would be my my first bit of advice. Otherwise. It's hard to say without seeing anything. So maybe get someone to film you, even just with a phone from the beach, and we can analyze it. Um, Patrick is looking for a drone with tracking mode. You know, I've seen a few of these, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't have any experience using one, and so I, I don't know the brand. So if anyone has experience, um, let Patrick let Patrick know. Um. Carol is asking if I keep looking over the shoulder in the double forward for both rotations. Yes, and it's very important. Um, it's when you start not looking over the shoulder that then the rotation starts to go more vertical. And that is a bad thing when you're doing double forwards. You do not want a vertical second rotation. Hey, Ragnar. Hope you had a nice spa. All right, let's get back to the group. I think we're kind of done. Um, we talked about this from Stefan. We talked about that last week. Cool. We're caught up quick. Good timing because I've got to get ready for, um, I've got to get ready because I'm competing tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> we've got wind coming and, uh, it looks like at the World Cup in Silt, we're going to be competing. So I'm going to wake up and go to the beach quite early. Uh, I think the skipper's meeting is at 7 or something. And I'm the fifth heat, the fifth heat. So you guys can wish me luck. There's no live stream, unfortunately, from this event. But um, you guys can check it out. We got one more question coming from Facebook. Let me scroll up and I can see who it is on Facebook. Um, let me just refresh this. All right, it's Stefan. I saw Stefan up in uh, up in Denmark. Um, why is there no live stream? Uh, apparently, because there wasn't enough budget for this event. Um, but all right, with that, I'm signing off. Wish me luck tomorrow. Cross your fingers 
and I will see you next week, Sunday. I'll see you in the group. Thank you, all the Patreon supporters. I'm working on the, the next newsletter pieces. The Robbie Nash interviews are already posted. Um, if you want to sign up, go to patreon.com slash Graham Ezzy. There's links to it all over the place in this description, probably. All right. Take care. Signing off. Have a good week. Thank you, everyone, for showing up.